Okay. All right. So let me just adjust the camera a bit here. Bring this up a touch. All right, that's good. Now you can see. All right, everybody. So hello, hello. Happy Friday to all of you and welcome back for those of you who are joining us again to the teaching kitchen. My name is Emily and you're joining us here at New York Presbyterian Hudson Valley Hospitals virtual teaching kitchen. Um, for those of you who are joining us for the first time. Welcome, we're so pleased that you found us. And I'm really, um, really overjoyed today to, to be sharing some homemade stocks and broths recipes. So um, many of you know the purpose of our kitchen is really to help foster um, healthy eating habits in the community and support our community through nutritional um, information. So I hope that you will enjoy this class. Um, just a reminder to everybody, and I see there's a bunch of people joining us now, um, kindly keep yourself muted throughout the presentation. And today I'm going to be both chef and moderator. So if you have a question, just unmute yourself, ask your question. Um, and you know, throughout the program, I will certainly ask and, and check in with everybody to see if you've got any questions that are popping up. Um, so certainly feel free to ask your question, unmute yourself, unmute yourself in that moment and then mute yourself again. So um, many of us are used to Zoom right now, but if you um, don't know where your microphone is, it's usually located in the lower left-hand corner of your screen. So you should be able to find it there. All right, everyone. So our program today is covering homemade stocks and broths. Everybody should have received a PDF of the recipes and information. I will also send this out again as part of a feedback survey after class. So if you didn't get it, no worries. I'll make sure that you do. Um, so absolutely, you'll have all the information we're going to cover. So the first thing I want to discuss is what is the difference between a stock and a broth? This is a question that I was asked over and over again throughout all of my cooking classes. And it was one that I really couldn't pin down. So I dug into my, my notes from culinary school, um, dug into some research and found out the answer. So stock versus broth. A broth is um, a broth is really more of a finished product. It can be enjoyed on its own and broth is traditionally made by simmering meat in water, um, often with vegetables and herbs. And this flavorful liquid is then used for um, a variety of culinary purposes. It can be used in sauces, um, risotto, dumplings, uh, casseroles, stuffing, you know, cooked grains and legumes. So broth is more of a finished product that can be enjoyed on its own, or it can be used in um, some culinary, you know, different culinary ways. So because of the rich flavor that, that broth has, it comes from that meat that was simmering with vegetables and herbs, you can drink broth plain. That's really the main difference between a stock and a broth. People often do this to remedy colds or flu, um, in fact, drinking that nice, warm, steaming broth is an effective way to help loosen up any mucus or anything from a cold um, when you have a stuffy nose. And it may be very effective in the form. That's one of the reasons we make chicken soup, right? It's, it's, it has that nice broth um, and the protein from the chicken and all that good stuff. So um, broth as opposed to stock. Broth is cooked for a relatively short amount of time um, since the meat will become tough if you cook it for too long. So if you're making broth, remove the meat as soon as it's fully cooked, out, you know, no longer than an hour. Um, that meat can then be used in another recipe. So if you're making chicken soup, for example, you could then add the, the chicken that you used for your broth into your chicken soup. So add it, add it later. All right, so that's really how, um, how broth is used. It's cooked for a relatively short amount of time. It can be enjoyed on its own or in dishes. Um, now stock is different. Stock is more of a part of a dish. Um, it's a flavorful liquid that's prepared by simmering meat, you know, poultry, fish, vegetables, um, usually in water and aromatics as well, herbs and spices and Stocks are more for, you have to kind of think of them as a foundation of many dishes. So 
it shouldn't overwhelm the dish, but sort of be a nice complement to the dish. Um, stocks are considered more of an unfinished product, right? A piece that you're then going to integrate into a soup or a stew or something else. Um, and meant to be, and it's meant to be used in really in the cooking of, of something else. So stock is more like a foundational flavor. Broth can be enjoyed on its own. So unlike, unlike the broth, the stock is, um, is more based on bones rather than meat. Um, so whereas the broth, you can use, you know, uh, chicken, chicken meat. And if you're making chicken stock, you wouldn't use bones with meat on them. You would clean off the bones of as much meat as possible and then just use the, the bones. So it's made by um, boiling bones or, you know, cartilage in water for many hours. And this allows the bone marrow and the collagen to be released. Um, this gives the stock a much thicker, more kind of gelatinous consistency than the broth. So it will be, again, like more jello-like because it, you've kind of seeped out all of that collagen um, all from the bone marrow and everything. So because it's made with bones and cartilage and not meat, stock is cooked for much longer than broth. It can, you know, go from two to three hours to eight hours. Even some people will even cook their um, stocks much longer over a whole day. Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend doing it overnight because you don't want to leave your stove on <laughs> while you're sleeping. So you can, you know, start it in the morning and turn it off at night. So this allows the stock more time to kind of thicken and become more concentrated as the collagen is released. Um, you can, of course, make stock with many different types of bones, chicken, beef, pork, um, even fish. There's fish stock as well. So that's sort of the, the thing about um, broth versus stock. They can be used interchangeably. Now, this is sort of the question, right? When would you use one versus the other? They, they can, they're very often used interchangeably, and it's really fine if you substitute broth for stock and vice versa. Um, so I think the only point of where you wouldn't use one versus the other is if you, if you have a choice between the two, use broth when the dish is largely based on the flavor of the liquid, such as a broth based soup. So using broth when the dish is largely based on the flavor of the liquid. Um, on the other hand, you can use stock when the dish gets plenty of flavor from other ingredients. Like if you were making a stew flavored with like the drippings of a roast or something like that. So that's sort of when you would use one versus, you would try to prioritize one versus the other, but they can be used interchangeably. Okay, so does anybody have any questions about that before we dive in um, to our cooking? Um, if anyone wants to unmute themselves, I know I just went through a lot of information. Carmelina, I see your hand is raised. I can't believe you, you even found the raised hand function. That's very impressive. Um, certainly, just unmute yourself and ask your question, Carmelina, if you'd like to. Okay, any questions coming through? All right, well, you can also um, always put the questions in the chat box and I can get, get to them after the class as well. Any other, anyone else? Okay. Uh, Emily, I, I unmuted oh, for a moment. <laughs> About uh, the stock and the broth, is it best, I tend to use organic when I'm doing anything like this. Do you recommend or does it matter or personal choice? Yeah, so great question. Thank you for asking that. Um, I generally try to use organic when possible, simply because it's generally better for the planet, but okay. it can be really expensive to use organic um, ingredients. So I think for this type of um, application, it's not going to make a huge difference from a health standpoint. Um, mm -hmm. From an environmental standpoint, that's another conversation. So Thank yeah, you. thank you. Any other questions? All right, so let's jump in. We're gonna start. Um, we're gonna start by making. Well, we have three things we're doing today. We're making a shiitake mushroom stock 
with um, dried shiitake mushrooms and kombu, which I'll introduce you to. Um, it's also known as kelp, a kind of seaweed. We're also going to be making a basic vegetable stock because this is just a great thing to have in your freezer. Anytime you're going to make a super stew, pull out that vegetable stock and it's going to be extremely flavorful. And then the third we're going to be making is a basic chicken stock. So three things we're going to be focusing on today. Um, with our, with our um, shiitake mushroom stock, we're also going to be making a sesame broth with snow peas. So I'm going to show you sort of how that um, comes together as well. Um, one of the biggest advantages, I think, to making your own, because it's certainly, you know, very easy to buy, um, you know, buy a box of stock or broth. And I, and I use these often. They're very, you know, they're very, very easy to use and they are shelf stable. Um, but one of the advantages when you're making your own is that you can control the sodium. Um, even in low sodium varieties of stocks and broth, there's often way more sodium than is recommended for your daily value. So this is 20% sodium um, per serving and four servings would multiply that up. So this is, you know, the whole, I mean, you're not going to go and drink the whole um, vegetable stock, but certainly if you make your own and if you're concerned about your sodium intake, um, you can control that factor. Um, you don't have to put salt in stocks or broths at all if you don't want to and if you're concerned about sodium. So certainly that's one of the major advantages. The other advantage is that it's really more flavorful to make your own um, and it's a nice kind of project. You know, a lot of us are stuck at home and we've got, you know, many hours to spend in our in our homes. So it's a really nice project because it just kind of you know, you let it kind of simmer throughout the whole day and it's, it makes the whole house ar aromatic. So it's a nice thing to kind of um, learn how to do. And it's a good way to use up some extra veggie scraps that you might have um, from, you know, your other meal preparations. So with that, let's jump right in. Um, we're going to start with our basic vegetable stock. So I've got onions and shallots for this one. And this is really, really simple. Basically, just want to make sure you can all see here. Basically, you just want to start by taking off the skins. You don't want to use onion skins when you're making stocks. I, I, I know chefs that use them because they don't want to waste anything, but I think that they impart a bit of a bitter flavor. So I prefer, if I want a really nice, flavorful um, vegetable stock, I prefer not to use the skins. So I'm just going to peel, that's my onion, and here's my shallot, taking off the top and the bottom, and just popping off those skins. You can pop them into your compost if you've got one. You know, that's always a good option to, um, to get rid of these skins. All right. So put this in our little bucket. And then you can see this is everything we're going to be using in our vegetable stock. So I've got onions. Um, shallots, carrots, celery, That's, those are kind of the basics. And then I also have some parsley over here. And I had some, I used some fennel earlier this week. Um, so I grabbed the tops of the fennel, which came with it, and chopped them off and just throw, threw them into my refrigerator because I knew I was going to be making stock. So that way I'm going to use that up as well. There's also a few aromatics we'll be adding. Got some peppercorns, some garlic, and some dried bay leaves. So that's all going to go into our stock as well. So I'm just going to start by heating. This pot has water in it. This is for our chicken. Um, and I'm going to start by heating up our other pot here to get it ready for the, um, the sweating of the vegetables. So very, very simply, we're just going to cut these things, you know, in a chunky, can kind of quarter them. All right, and we're gonna add these to the pot. These are the carrots and the, I'm sorry, these are the onions and then we'll do the carrots next. So you just wanna make sure everything's about the same size. And remember everything that we're, you know, everything that we're putting into this pot is gonna get strained out. So it doesn't have to be too exact, right? This is kind of like the advantage of making a, uh, making a stock is that you just kind of dump everything into the pot. It's really not, not very difficult, but it is time consuming. 
Um, you can also, there's always the option of roasting your vegetables before uh, making a stock with them. So this is going to change the color of your stock. It's going to be a lot darker, right? Because you will have roasted it and caramelized it. And um, it's also going to change the flavor. It's going to be a lot sweeter. We're not going to do that today. We're just going to do the basic one. So I noticed someone inputted a question in the chat box. Um, if you wouldn't mind, if you care to unmute yourself, we will gladly take your question. I'm just I was just wondering, Emily, in. when making uh, stocks, is it better to use the uh, whole peppercorn rather than ground pepper? Yes, that is a fantastic question. Um, it is better to use the whole peppercorn, which is what we're doing here today, instead of the ground pepper. Um, and I actually don't quite know the reason for that. That's just how we learned to do it in culinary school. I suppose it probably would have something to do with wanting to keep the stock um, clear, right? So instead of having um, flakes of pepper, you know, floating around, this way you have a really nice, beautiful, clear stock. Thank you for your question. That's a good one. Thank you, Emily. So I'm just going to peel the carrots. I peeled a few of them already, but this is how I do it. I brace it against the cutting board and I use my peeler to peel away from myself. And again, carrot peels, sort of controversial when it comes to stocks and broths for chefs because some people, some chefs like them and some chefs do not. Um, certainly, if you were trying not to waste a thing, then you could you know, leave the carrot peels on there. I think they do impart a, a bitter flavor. So I prefer not to use the carrot peels from a flavor standpoint. Of course, from an environmental and try not to waste standpoint, um, it is, you know, good to use as much of the vegetable as possible. So I just took off the tops and the little bottoms here. And here we're just going to go for a nice rough chop on our carrots. Okay. Already the onions right into the pot. All right, so you can see this is like quite chunky. It's not too, not too small, right? Nice chunky pieces. Pop those in with the onions. So onion, carrot, and celery, which are often the base of most soups. Well, guess what? They're also the base of most stocks. Onions, carrots, and celery. So I've got our celery here. Um, just make sure you wash everything really well before you put it into the pot because you don't want, you know, pieces of dirt getting into your, into your stock. It's not going to be very palatable. All right. So we're just sweating the vegetables. And what does that mean? It means that we're not putting any color on them, right? We're keeping them just, we're just kind of applying some heat. And why is it called sweating? Well, because they should look like they're sweating. <laughs> so they should look like they have little beads of um, little beads of sweat, basically. All right, I had an extra parsnip that um, showed up in my refrigerator this week, so I'm gonna peel that and throw this in. Parsnip is nice; it adds like a little bit of a sweetness to your stock, so you can really manipulate and change the flavor of your stock depending on what you put in it. All right. So let's take this, and I'm just going to prepare this just like the carrot, nice big chunks. I always feel a little heartbroken when I make stocks because you put all these vegetables into your pot and you don't actually eat them. You're just kind of like making a, making tea with them for a very long time, and then you kind of throw them out. But, um, but it is extremely flavorful, so it's, it's, it's worth it in the end. All right, so I've got some garlic cloves that I peeled here, almost a whole head, and you can just kind of smash them down or give them a rough chop, whichever you prefer. Um, you can buy garlic cloves that are already peeled. That makes it a lot easier if you'd like. Um, you know, just give them, a, kind of break them up a little bit. Let's throw those in. All right, and then like I mentioned, I've got a couple of aromatics we're gonna be adding. So. Parsley stems, I used the leaves in another recipe, but I saved those stems because those are gonna be great in there. And our um, fennel tops, and I have some fresh thyme, so that's all gonna get thrown in as well. Any questions? I know I'm kind of moving quickly on this. Everyone's following so far. 
Emily, what if you yeah. have, hi, it's Denise. What if you have dried herbs? Yeah, um, good question, Denise. So certainly you could use fresh or dried, whichever you prefer. It's just gonna simmer and add flavor. So um, either one would be fine. Yeah, thank you for being here, Denise. All right, let's add our bay leaves, our peppercorns, and now everything's gotten a little bit of heat on it. We can add our water. Um, you would add salt at this point too, if you were, you know, making something with salt, if you wanted to. So what am I looking at here? The vegetables are starting to release some of their liquid. They're just starting to, with the heat, get a little sweaty as we say. So it's time to add our water. So I have some water I set up here. Pour that over. Okay, and stocks are great because once you've made them, you can keep them in the freezer for, you know, three months and they will continue to flavor your dishes. So they're really wonderful for that reason. All right, so I've added the liquid and guess what happens now? The top goes on. I'm going to move it right to the back here so that it's not in my way as we do our next dishes. Nice and easy. Turn this off. A little bit of a stove Texas up here. All right, and that's it. We've made our vegetable stock. How easy is that? You just set it to the back, let it simmer. Um, you want to turn it up, right, to bring it to a boil. So it should, you should have it, right now I have it on a high temperature. And then as soon as it starts to boil, I'll turn it down and let it simmer for, you know, an hour and a half, two hours. Um, it's very, you know, very, very simple because you just let it sit. Um, and then you're going to strain it. So how are you going to do that? You're going to need a sieve or a strainer, one that's a lot bigger than this one, hopefully. Um, you will have that set into another pot or you know another large vessel if you've got one um it's good to have a good stock pot you know if you really want to get into making broths and stocks it's good to have a good stock pot so after after it's cooked you can just let it strain and then um, if you want to also if you're nervous about pouring the hot stock or the hot broth through a strainer just turn it off after two hours and let it sit and cool down a bit um, and you can always handle it a little bit later when it's cooler so it, you know it's not splashing around and you won't hurt yourself. Um, we are making large quantities today. Certainly you can make a lot less if you prefer. Just cut the recipes in half and they'll work just as well. Um, any questions? Yes. Yes. Do you simmer the stock with the lid on? Oh yes. So so once it's come to um, once it's come to a boil, I do turn the heat down and I, I leave the lid on. I don't want too much of the liquid to evaporate out. Um, it's not gonna make a huge difference though, <laughs> lid on or lid off. Yeah. That's, Emily, that's, is, is, yeah. is it better to put hot water or warm water in the hot vegetables? Cold. Or cold. So yeah, so thank you so much for asking that. You <laughs> always want to um, put cold water into your whatever you're working, you know, if you're working with um, making the vegetable stock, cold water is preferable. Yeah. Thank you. All right. So let's get to our next um, recipe here, if that's all right with everybody. We're going to make the basic chicken stock. So for this one, um, as I mentioned, chicken stock is going to include bones and no meat versus chicken broth, which would be with meat in it that you could then cook and eat. Um, so I got here, these are the chicken bones that we're using today. I got these chicken bones from Marbled Meat, which is in Cold Spring, if you're familiar with them. Um, they work with whole animals, which is really great from small family owned farms. Um, they do like pasture raised beef and lamb and pork and chicken, no antibiotics ever. Um, and they're also part of an interesting program called the Green Circle Program, which is led by D'Artagnan. Um, basically what it is is, is they work with a collective of farmers um, from Pennsylvania that raise heritage birds longer than most normal commercial um, chicken producers. So 
these heritage birds raised longer, basically what that does is it imparts even more of a flavorful um, end product. So it's called Green Circle also because they work with surrounding restaurants and markets and take all of the vegetable scraps from the, the um, restaurants and the markets to feed the chickens. So it kind of all comes um, full circle and they're certified humane as well. So um, certainly if you wanted to buy chicken bones, that would be a great resource. Um, but you can also, you know, go to your, your, your local, wherever you are, um, your local store and, and ask about getting chicken bones as well. So I'm working with a variety of chicken bones today. I have backs, necks, and feet. Um, these are gonna be really, really great in terms of flavor. And you can throw them into the pot with, this pot is, um, has boiling water in it. So you could throw them right into the pot and boil them that way. Or if you wanted to take an extra step, and this is completely optional and not written in your recipes, you can roast them a little bit. So you can put them on a sheet pan and just roast them to get them um, kind of get some of the flavor, um, you know, that nice meaty uh, flavor on there. So you've got options. All right. So for this one, this is very similar to our vegetable stock in that we're still going to be using the carrots, the onions, and the parsley, and the celery. So, right, those look familiar. And then the chicken um, bits as well. So for this one, similar, you're just gonna kind of rough chop your onion. I'm just quartering these, really simple. And then rough chop your carrots. I've got three of them I already peeled to get ready for this class. Same thing with the celery that's already chopped. And then our parsley, let's just give that a nice chop. All right, so all that's gonna go into our hot water. Uh, I also have a couple other things to throw in here. I have dried thyme. So that answers uh, your question about fresh or dried. I have some dried thyme and some dried bay leaves. So we'll throw that in as well. And then one of the crucial differences when you're working with bones is you want to add some vinegar to them. So I have apple cider vinegar here. Um, and what that does is it really helps to draw out the nutrients from the bones. So that's really an important thing to add to your, um, to your stocks. All right, so I've got my hot water here. And let me scoop this back. All right, and we'll just um, turn on the heat back there so that we can work with this burner up here for our next recipe. All right, so in go, these are called the aromatics, right? In go the aromatics. Woo. And in, in go the chicken bones. So you can use, you know, these tongs are useful to kind of grab up and put in. All right, so again, feet, necks, um, bats, those are all really good options for your chicken bones. Oh boy, these are a little sticky. <laughs> I didn't put any oil on them or anything. I just threw them on a pan on some parchment and roasted them. I thought it would give them a little extra flavor, so why not? All right. Any questions while I wrestle with our chicken here? <laughs> yes. Hi, uh, this is Patricia. Hey, Patricia. I was wondering if you do roast the bones, uh, what temperature and how long would you do that? Oh, thank you for asking that. Yes, I realized I didn't provide that in the packet. Um, so if you wanted to roast the bones, I did it at 425 degrees. And I let them roast for about 45 minutes to an hour, just until they started to, um, you know, look a little brown and smell a little bit like roasted meat. That's how long I did it for. And would it be the same if you used beef bones? Uh, beef bones are a little bit larger and um, chunkier, so you may want to roast for you know up to an hour or, or even longer. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. So I'm noticing I should not have put the parchment paper down because it is kind of it kind of stuck to my chicken. But, um, but you can just put them on a sheet pan and you'll have an easier time than I did. Parchment paper is supposed to make life easier, <laughs> not harder. All right, this is good though. I think we got most of them now. Emily, okay. you, taught, you taught me about parchment paper and I truly appreciate it. It usually oh. makes life easier. 
<laughs> oh, good. I'm so glad. Yes. Well, I wouldn't use it in this instance. It uh, it just kind of stuck, but I got you know I got all the pieces in the pot. Thank you. All right. Emily, why get the not chicken start with boiling water? So for the chicken, um, it's a little bit of a different. You're right. It's a little bit of a different process. Um, I started with the hot water for the chicken and then put everything in. Um, and again, this is a recipe that I followed from culinary school. So I think um, the reason it's different perhaps has to do with the ingredients, like using chicken bones versus just vegetables. Um, with the chicken bones, basically when you use, you have to think of it this way, when you use cold water, you want it, you, you're looking for a very kind of clear product, something that's not going to be murky or browned or, you know, very, very clear liquid. Um, when you're, when you're going from hot water, it's not going to be clear. So I would think that because we're using, anytime you're using bones in a recipe, it's already going to kind of get murky. Um, so there's no reason to use the I, you know, the cold water there. That's, that would be my guess. All right, let's add our vinegar as well. Let's not forget that. And with our time we have left, we've got to make our mushroom next. So for this recipe, I'm going to teach you both how to make the stock, and we're going to make a little soup from it. Very quick, simple soup. Um, so I'm going to, I started by just simmering, gently simmering the um, shiitake mushrooms. And here's what they look like, the dried shiitake mushrooms. And the kombu, which I mentioned to you earlier. This is what that looks like. Kelp kombu, dried seaweed, wonderful source of minerals. And I just kind of let those simmer together for about 30 minutes or so. And you're going to see it has this lovely dark, mushroom kind of smells really really good so i let this cool down a little bit that's why i can handle it right now but i let it simmer for about 30 minutes or so and you have the recipe for this in your packet right so this is how you make your simple very very simple mushroom stock um, we're going to be reusing these shiitake mushrooms in the soup recipe the kombu however we're going to discard Unless you love kombu and you wanted to chop it up and use it in your soup, be my guest. But it is seaweed. It has a very strong taste. <laughs> so just be aware. All right, here's our mushroom stock. And you can make this recipe with the dried shiitake mushrooms and just simmer it with the kombu um, for 30 minutes or so. If you can't find kombu or kelp, um, you can use another seaweed that if you have what or something else, that will work too. Um, kombu and kelp is sort of the, pre the preferable one. Um, and, you know, in a worst case scenario where you don't have any of those hanging around the house and you just have the dried shiitake mushrooms, mm -hmm. you can simmer those for 30 minutes and you'll still get a really nice, rich, flavorful liquid. So Emily, like if you wanted to make, yes. How long does kelp or any of the kombu dried last yeah. in the package? Oh my gosh, they last, I mean, I think they, they say an expiration date um, on them, but they last for, they're like, you know, nuclear okay. foods. They will okay. just last forever. <laughs> they're Thank like Twinkies. <laughs> I'm covered. I'm covered. <laughs> yeah, you're good. You're good. All right. So Great. let's get our pot heated here. And um, we're going to start off by sauteing a little bit of sliced garlic. Now, one of the things I like um, about garlic is you can kind of adjust the strength of the garlic by how you um, manage it. So if you crush it and mince it, it's going to have a stronger taste than if you gently slice it. Um, so if you want sort of a milder garlic taste, go ahead and slice it. If you love garlic and want more, go ahead and crush it. So I'm going to just take off the top and the bottom and kind of peel this just like I peel my onions, right? Taking off the top and the bottom. Cutting it in half makes it a little bit easier to get that peel off, <clears throat> right? <clears throat> and then you can go ahead and just gently slice, okay? We're gonna saute this in a little bit of toasted sesame oil, which is one of my uh, favorite oils to work with because it just smells like roasted nuts. It's just 
so aromatic and flavorful. And this is gonna to come together pretty quickly because we've already done the stock. Right, so let's just add a little bit of oil to the bottom of this pot here, just enough to cover. And I have this on a, on a low heat because I don't wanna burn the garlic. It's kind of a low, low medium. All right, let's start with that. Um, we're also gonna add some carrot to this. So I'll just take off the top, a little bit of the bottom and cut this in half here just to make it easier, right? If you wanted to tunnel and, and cut through the whole thing, you could, but it's a little bit easier to work with smaller pieces. So cut it in half now. And we're just gonna go for pretty little carrot half moons. So remember you're tucking your fingers when you're working with your chef's knife and just gliding across to make, everything should be about a quarter of an inch thick. You always wanna try to have um, good posture when you're cutting, right? So you maintain, um, you know, you're, you're right in front of your vegetables so you don't do this and cut like this and then over time we get all crooked, right? So just try to maintain good posture. Be mindful as you're cutting, watch your fingers and kind of scoot down as you go. So I'm just gently sauteing the garlic here. We're gonna add the vegetable stock. We're gonna add the mushrooms. Here they are. Let's throw those in with our simmering garlic. Um, again, you can use, um, this recipe calls for, I think, four cups of vegetable stock and two cups of the mushroom stock. You can use just mushroom stock if you like this really you know, strong mushroom flavor. So either one, either one is fine. Let's add our carrot. And this is really, you know, you can, it's a soup. You can make it kind of however you want to. If you've got extra, you know, daikon radish lying around or um, maybe you have some extra spinach or greens or, that you need to use up, throw those in. Um, we have some snow peas, which are really nice in here. So you can just kind of stack those up and throw some of those in. And that's it, very, very simple, right? So once you've made that broth or that stock, the rest is just kind of sauteing the garlic for just an instant and then adding in some vegetables. Um, if you wanted to add some protein to this soup as well, it's really good with um, a little bit of tofu crumbled in. If you wanted to add some of that, you could throw in some salt. Remember nothing's been salted here. So you can put a little bit of salt or you could do soy sauce if you like. I had this nice, big, beautiful bok choy. So let me show you how to work with that. You can just take off as much as you want, peel out the outer leaves. I'm gonna take off the bottom here because it's very, very sandy and kind of rooty. And then cut this right in half and we'll just slice across and throw this in as well. So it's, you know, nice, simple, easy, kind of nice Asian flavors and very, very healthy, full of veggies. And this, um, this will keep in the refrigerator easily for you know three to five days. I don't know that it freezes very well because it has the um, dried mushrooms, which tend to, the texture tends to taste when you freeze them, but you could try freezing it too. All right, so any questions about that? I have a few more minutes that I'd like to review. Um, a little bit more about stock versus broth from a health standpoint. Any questions before I get into that? Yes, hi Emily, this is Patricia again. Is there a big difference in taste between the kombu and the kelp and even nori? Could you use nori if you have that around? Yeah, so, um, so that's a good question, Patricia. Kelp and kombu, um, and I'm glad you asked that because nori is something that most of us can find in our supermarkets right around here. Kelp, you really have to seek out a little bit more. Um, hmm. There is a big difference in taste in that nori is a lot milder than kelp and, and kombu. So um, you could use nori, but maybe use like three or four sheets instead of just one to try to get more out of it. Yeah, good question. Thank you. Is there a difference though between the kombu and the kelp if one were to buy? Nope, they are, it's just a different term that's used. You'll see this um, on this package, it says, 
oh. uh, kelp kombu, right? It, it's just the same. It's the same thing. It's just used, you know, interchangeably. I think maybe kombu is like perhaps the Japanese word for it, and kelp is the American. Right. Right. Um, not sure. Uh, yeah, I think it's just a difference in language. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for watching. All right. Emily? So. Yes. <laughs> with, with the sesame oil, does that turn rancid? Should that be refrigerated when opened? Yeah, so toasted sesame oil, it, it doesn't need to be um, refrigerated when opened, but you do want to use it, you know, because it's toasted, yes. um, like, like you mentioned, it will kind of expire or go rancid more quickly than your traditional cooking oil would. Um, you can slow that process down. If you've got space in your refrigerator, then certainly uh, if you want to keep it there, go ahead. Good, thank That'll you. That'll help to slow it down, yeah. So just a quick note about stock versus broth, which is healthier, right? From a health standpoint, we're always trying to, um, you know, make sure that we address those, the health questions as well. So broth usually contains about half the calories per cup than stock does. And that kind of makes sense, right? Because stock's been concentrated and everything's been sucked out for longer. So one cup of chicken broth, for example, has like 38 calories and a cup of stock has about 86. Um, stocks generally contain slightly more carbs, slightly more fats, and slightly more protein as well than broth. Um, but they're also significantly higher in vitamins and minerals because because broth is lower in calories, it might be a preferred option if someone is trying to limit their calorie intake. Um, but stock generally contains more nutrients. I see our chicken stock has come to a boil here. So I'm just going to turn that down. And now that's just going to sit and simmer for until I leave work. So many hours. <laughs> um, so let that sit and simmer. And then you can keep it in the refrigerator or, you know, cool it down and freeze it as well. Uh, so back to the difference between stock and broth from a health standpoint, um, I was saying stock contains more nutrients as well as collagen, marrow, amino acids, and minerals. So these may, may help and help protect the digestive tract. Um, some, some, you know, anecdotes have said that stock can help improve sleep and support um, joint health. So I'm gonna talk a little bit more about bone broth as well. I know that's sort of a health trend, so I'm gonna talk about that a little bit um, in a moment. Um, just another note, in adding vegetables and herbs to either stock or broth, that can really help to increase the vitamin and mineral content, right? It makes sense, you're adding you know, all those aromatics. Um, parsley, oregano, thyme, for example, they are all great sources of antioxidants and they're commonly used in stock and broth. We use those today. Um, another note is that when you simmer, right, when you gently simmer over a long period of time, simmering actually increases the antioxidant capacity of, um, of the, the vegetables and aromatics that you're using. Um, so by simmering, you're kind of drawing out even more antioxidants and making these stocks very, very nutrient rich. Onions and garlic to powerhouses that I feel like, you know, get thrown under the bus more often than not. They are awesome. And they, in, they have their own unique benefits, including the antibacterial, anti-inflammatory, and potentially immune boosting properties. So wonderful thing to kind of have um, boiling away. Um, okay, any questions about all of that? I know that was a lot of information and I wanna um, just quickly address a couple more terms if, um, if we don't have any more questions. I'll take a question or two now. Hello. Hello. How do you uh, rank chopped garlic in the jar with making your own chopped? Yeah, thank you for your question and thanks so much for watching. Um, so fresher is always better. I think we all know by now, you know, the closer you can get to the source of your food, the closer you can get to a fresh, um, something fresh, the stronger it's going to be in nutrients. Um, that said, you're not going to lose out that much if, you know, if chopped garlic is so much easier for you then use the chopped garlic. It's better than not using any garlic at all. Thank you. All right. 
Thank you. Thank you for asking your question. I know it can be, you know, getting getting in front of everybody and asking your question, you know. Um, thank you. So in addition to broth and stock, there are a few other related terms that are worth discussing. One is bouillon. What on earth is a bouillon? So bouillon is simply the French word for broth. Um, however, it can be used in place of broth. And bouillon cubes are simply broth that has been dehydrated and shaped into small cubes. So that's bouillon. Um, they then have to you know, be mixed with water and re reconstituted to make your broth. So that's bouillon. Another term, which is not one that we really frequently hear, um, is consommé. Consommé is stock that has further been um, concentrated and refined. So that involves simmering the bones even longer um, for up to, you know, for, for a longer amount of time. And then usually um, chefs make what's called a raft by using egg whites, and that helps to kind of steep out any impurities. So consommé is like super high-end stuff that, you know, isn't really done much in households, but it's a lovely, flavorful um, stock that's been further concentrated. Now, the last thing I wanna talk about is bone broth. Now, this is really interesting because it's become extremely popular for, you know, over the past few years, and it's usually made by simmering bones and vegetables for 24 hours or so. Um, it's gained reputation as a superfood. However, um, bone broth is really just simply a new term for a very traditional food, stock, which is what we're doing here. Um, the only way in that it differs is that it's often cooked longer, like I mentioned, for even 24 hours. Um, it often also will include an acidic component, like we added our vinegar today, uh, to aid in kind of breaking down the connective tissue of the bones. So aside from these distinctions, stock and bone broth are essentially the same thing. Um, from a health standpoint, currently there aren't really any studies that support bone broth as being, um, you know, there is a lot of anecdotal uh, stories of bone broth being helpful for digestion and helping with joints and, and all of that stuff. Currently, that hasn't been scientifically proven yet, but if you have it and you try it and you like it and it helps your digestion and your bones feel better, then by all means, go ahead and enjoy it. It's a healthy food to have as part of your diet in any, any regard. All right, everybody. So our little mushroom stock is boiling here. Any last questions before we close today? All right. So I included in your handout here. Oh, did somebody jump on there? Um, Emily, okay. hi. Yes, hi. Um, uh, would you um, mention um, the idea of using the turkey carcass when you finished up uh, yeah. using the turkey? So I recognize your voice, Chris. Thank you for thank you for being here. Um, sure. So definitely a great thing to do with your leftover turkey, right? clean off any meat, eat that up, and then you can use the, the same exact recipe that we have here with the chicken bones, you can use with your turkey carcass. So thanks for mentioning that, that's a great idea. All right, everybody. So in your packets, you'll have a little bit more information about vegetable stocks, how long to simmer them, um, stock versus broth, kind of in a nutshell. And um, you know, the most important things is things about making your own vegetable stock are listed here. So you can refer to that. Uh, it's very, very simple. Give it a try. You're going to find that it adds so much flavor to your soups, and it's going to be a lot healthier because you're going to um, minimize the amount of salt that would normally be used. So thank you, everybody, for watching. We've got more classes coming up next week. We have um, Dr. Newby joining us. That's going to be a wonderful physician program about tips for healing. So um, if you want to come on back for that one, um, we have a couple more programs coming up in February. Our February calendar has gone out to all of our participants. Hopefully you received that in your email. If you did not receive that in your email, you can always check our events page or send me an email and I'm happy to forward it to you. Um, as always, thank you so much for watching. You know, keep getting inspired. Stay connected with us here at New York Presbyterian Hudson Valley Hospital and keep cooking. Whatever you do, keep cooking. All right. Thanks, everyone.
Thank you.